Hello, we are The Gig Show, I am Rob and today we're going to be talking about Grip, a indie game from Wired Productions which has a storied history, um, it had a Kickstarter and then it went on a Steam Greenlight and it's been in a state of perpetual development ever since really and if you click on the top right hand corner there for the annotations you'll see me interviewing um, one of the people from Wired Productions from EGX in summer 2018 so do click on that. Now I'll admit straight away that I am a massive, well I was a massive fan of uh, Roll Cage and Roll Cage Stage 2 but it's been such a long time since it was last out, I mean we're talking PlayStation 1 era here that I, honest, I forgot it existed, a fan forgot it existed. Now you, you can say that it's not making me much of a fan, but it is what it is. Um, so the question there is, what's, how is it going to appeal to sort of a new audience? Because you know fans have forgotten about it. So what what is this to new people? Um, and I don't think that's much of an issue, honestly, um, because especially in the indie game space. And off the back of Wipeout um, HD on the PlayStation 3, and it's since subsequently been reissued on the PS4. I think there's a hunger for this style of racing game, because you look at what the modern like, racer is now. Uh, you have the kart games, which are sort of perpetually just always there. They'll never go anywhere. You have the more traditional racing games, which have kind of just abandoned the idea of appealing to a broad audience, and they've just really doubled down on the idea of being like this hardcore product for hardcore racers. So these people who, you know, whether you like Burnout in the PlayStation 2, 3 era, or whether you liked uh, Wipeout, whether you liked Roll Cage, whether you like whatever, that's not really an audience which is catered to all that well outside of the indie space. And in the indie space, we're talking about a lot of anti-grav um, races, which, again, it's created a situation where Roll Cage stands out, because that, so that's what was happening uh, back in the PlayStation 1 era. A lot of people were inspired by Wipeout, so a lot of people copied Wipeout. Not as much as there is today, obviously, because not as many people make games. But it's created a situation where this, where Grip stands out. Um, and honestly, yeah, it, it, it's pretty interesting, really, because um, it's fun, but it's borrowing a lot from a lot of different styles of races. Um, we'll just get past this part of the game because uh, it's... It's heavily customizable. You open different vehicles and different levels. Um, customizable in the way that you see there. Colors, decals, whatnot. It's it's nothing out of the ordinary. You just add a little bit of your spin on it. And uh, all the footage that's included in this playthrough. This is just like me playing the game for like half an hour. So I'll talk for a little while and then I'll, I'll be quiet so you can just watch the game play. So I'll just give you a heads up before that happens that this is likely to have a lot of resets because it is that style of game, but I will get into that once it's rolling at its insane speeds. Uh, so yeah, one thing, I, I love this art. This pops up on all the loading screens and it just gives it such a unique flavour and it has like, it builds the world, which I like a great deal. Um, But yes... Um, it borrows a lot from a lot of style of games. I mean, fundamentally, it's an arcade racer. It's uh, very simple. And if you haven't heard of Roll Cage, and let's be fair, it's perfectly reasonable that you wouldn't have. It's a racing game, um, obviously, as you can see, um, which you have a vehicle which can go hundreds upon hundreds of miles an hour. I mean, now we're talking about a vehicle that's going, what, a couple of 300, 400 miles an hour? And this championship in the career mode or campaign mode is classed as slow see what I mean about uh, yeah resetting resetting the race as well as resetting your vehicle <coughs> but as well as <coughs> pardon me but as well as um, going hundreds of miles an hour you have wheels that are so considerable that you can basically drive um, on any surface I'm not illustrating it very well here, but uh, yes, there you go, I, I just jump from one wall to the other. 
which gives the entire game an incredibly, um, well, expressive way of playing. Uh, bear with me, but it actually reminds me of um, the racing modes on SX, another long forgotten game. Well, not as long as uh, Rock Edge, but um, the race track is is fine. But it's got shortcuts, and you can go, you can make your own path, you can make your own route. And I think that's the sort of thing which keeps racing games interesting, frankly. Because you can go around, I'm reducing racing games quite badly here, but you go around in a circle and you go around in a circle, and it's the same circle over and over again. And that's where the sort of the um, simulation stuff comes in, where it's about racing lines, it's about managing your vehicle and, and whatnot. But for a game to sort of give you that sort of canvas to find and play, rather than just follow, um, it stands grip in incredibly good stead. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, the difficulty. Um, it doesn't have anything as difficult to go back to Wipeout uh, HD as the Zones mode. It's been a while since I played it, but I believe it was Zones mode. It's where you went around the track and it went faster and faster every year. And you had to last for so long. And then it went into eye bleeding mode. Um, this does get eye bleedingly fast, but nothing as difficult as that. Um, I think the difficulty here is, it's because of the nature of the track. It's because of the speed. It's because of the power-ups. You get all sorts of power-ups. Um, and different level of championship and different level of race have different levels of um, power-ups. As you'll see later on in this video. I mean, you have the obvious speed-em-ups and uh, tracking bombs and all sorts of things. You know, we usually get in this sort of game. But think of... Um, think of... There we go. Restarting it. <laughs> Got some messed up. Great timing. Um, but think of um, Mario Kart. People say of Mario Kart that um, it has sort of a rubber banding mechanic where nobody can really go incredibly far ahead in the race because, you know, it has power ups, it has mechanics, it makes it, it pull the last character along and drag the last character back so anybody can win at any time. I wouldn't say that um, this has that. What I would say, though, is, like I was mentioning before, I rudely interrupted myself in the video with the race there. <laughs> um, the cars are so fast, the vehicle, the tracks are so different and fluid and all over the place that it, you can go from first to last in about two seconds, and you can catch them up in the same. So it's constantly asking for focus and it's constantly changing and I think it negates not so much the skill because you can still be skillful at this game but it's like you play uh, Tekken and you bash the buttons and you can still win so you can be as unskilled as you like in this like, sort of have a, a basic level of you can play the game and you can do it well and it goes fine that's 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 one thing there's one of the uh, power-ups, the tracking bomb. But yes, you can be as average as you want as this, or as great as you want as this. Because of the way the game is designed and set up, you always stand a chance of winning. Unless you make some cat catastrophic mess-up, um, like I did prior to my previous restart. It's a wide-open race, and... The design is great. Um, I, I love the the sense of the what the vehicles are. I mean, I know it's it's back from Roll Cage, which is sort of pulling this back from the the beyond, pulling this concept back from the beyond and reviving Roll Cage. Um, but it's that sort of futuristic cyber. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess it is cyberpunk, uh, which aspect I really like. Um, the Lord and screens give it a sense of world building because you don't see any races, you don't see any drivers, and that's the only way you see the humans. That's the only way you see how little bits work, and it's also really good art, I think. Um, and it's fun, yeah. Um, it's fluid as in the interview, which is in the top hand, uh, 
top right hand corner if you click the eye it says they're going to be supporting this long term so it's always going to be new things coming to this game and that, that's great um, but the question I have to ask myself is am I enjoying this because I have massive nostalgia feelings for uh, Roll Cage and that era of PlayStation 1 crazy crazy racing game um, Ooh, also thought this might also play, appeal to the people who play um, oh what's the name of that game this is a four par F football car game oh yeah I'll put it in the comment in the description because I'm being stupid right now uh, I coughed earlier coming over a bit of the flu so apologies for foggy brain but yeah it'll appeal to people like that too but there's plenty of stuff I like in this but is it nostalgia or is it genuinely good and I think it's both it's genuinely good but nostalgia is knocking it that level up it's making me have much more positive feelings about it and I think that's only good at the end of the day you know um, how yeah fair enough a lot of people are saying that not many games are getting <coughs> sorry again not many new games are getting made and it's a lot of remasters it's a lot of remakes and that's fine but when it's something like this it's brought back from the past and it's been rebuilt in such a brilliant way and considered way and expanded upon in so many different ways and makes it much more complicated and the mechanics much more complicated I think that's only a good thing for gaming really because it's, it's like history you, you can't go forward if you don't know where you came from and there's some great stuff where we came from as far as video games history is concerned so yeah um, this is grip genuinely enjoying it quite a lot I can't comment on anything like the, the online mechanics because as I was playing this, the online on PlayStation wasn't live yet. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, if they're talking about sponsor, uh, supporting this game long term going forward, online community is the sort of thing which that is tailored towards. And all signs point towards an excellent game with a great ability to sort of foster a community. So... Yeah, that's Grip. I played it on PlayStation 4. Uh, I'm going to shut up for a while now and let you just watch the video. So, I'm Rob. This has been The Geek Show. Please do subscribe, comment below, like if you like, share if you like it even more. Uh, until next time, I'll see you later. And don't forget to stick around for much more gameplay to come.